Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjay Guha Thakurta, and this episode of we are going to discuss the recent election laws amendment bill, which seeks to link Aadhaar, the Aadhaar card, with the electoral photo identity card, and we are going to look at the dangers inherent in this linkage what it means for surveillance by the state we already have a surveillance state what 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 is it going to mean in the future and to discuss this issue i'm very happy to welcome two experts who are here with me in the studio i am very happy to have professor subhashish banerji hello for 30 years you've been working with the Indian institute of technology delhi now you're with the computer science department of ashoka university and with us here is prabir purakasto who's the editor of news click and for the benefit of our viewers has a background in technology engineering science let me start with you subhashish mm -hmm. you know your article in the indian express which you wrote with your colleague at iit delhi subodh sharma a the the new laws were rammed through but that's that's part of what the government has been doing. No public consultations, no discussion with the opposition. You just ram it through. But what you're saying is that you have already a set of rules and a set of laws in existence. The registration of electors rules of 1960, which are under the representation of the People Act of 1950. And though, yes, they were done many years ago, long before the digital age, what they have done now, what the government is seeking to do now by linking voter identity cards with Aadhaar, you are going to create a new set of problems. Issues of transparency, issue of privacy, what is public, what is private, publicly and digitally available, and where do you, how do you prevent access to profiling and influencing of voters, which is going to have a huge impact on the entire, on democracy in India. So if you can summarize your views, why do you think this linkage is inherently extremely dangerous? Um, you know, fundamentally two reasons. Uh, one is uh, the, the voters list at the time of formation of those acts, they, that was a paper document that was in register. Um, now, over the last 10 years, the voters list has become digitized. You know, so they are available in a digital form. And though they put it up in as an image or as a PDF, uh, it is fairly easy to copy it and uh, do digital analytics on it. That has certain dangers with or without linking, linking with Aadhaar. Right? Uh, it's, uh, so profiling using that data is not illegal according to current laws. But uh, digital profiling, so for example, you can uh, map the name and address, which is a part of a uh, electoral role, to say caste, religion, um, and similar other demographic stuff. Right? As has been done in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. And that's fairly easy to do. And that has certain consequences. Now, whether you want to run elections that way, the parliament and the electorate had to, had to decide. So this required discussion, this required deliberations putting in safeguards if you wanted to prevent it, as in my opinion you should. Now, none of that was addressed and certainly what you do is that, that you link it with uh, Aadhaar, which is uh, a government instrument. So, UIDI is under government control where the Election Commission of India, which is the primary responsibility of electoral rules, is an independent constitutional body. Whereas, the, yes, so you are saying one is an independent constitutional body, the other is a part of the government, the unique identification authority of India. True. And now if you, um, you know, so Aadhaar enrollment is something on which ECI will have no control. What is the enrollment process? Who is getting enrolled? What is the deduplication mechanism? Nobody knows the deduplication mechanism. It's not, not in public domain. It has not been publicly audited. Now, if you use that data to, to deduplicate the voters list, right? Um, the question is that uh, what will happen? There are two possibilities. One is if Aadhaar has spurious information, spurious um, enrollments, right? Uh, 
So you heard that Hanuman also has an Aadhaar card in this country. But if there are more such spurious enrollment, that spurious effect will come into voter ID. So we will create a huge list of spurious voters. That's one possibility. The second possibility is that uh, you know, if certain voters are inconvenient to certain entities, the voters list can be manipulated and they can be uh, eliminated like you heard in stories in Telangana and, and, and so on and so forth. And these have serious repercussions because... Yet, yet interestingly, the government's justification mm -hmm. is that it's going to stop fraud or reduce the element of fraud and duplication. You know, so you cannot just make a claim. You have to show how. Right? And you have to convince people. Um, and only way to convince people is to then show, if you want to do this, that the Aadhaar database has unquestionable integrity. Right? And um, Which is not the case. Which at least there is no public information that is the case. Right? Okay. So there has been no audit. There is no audit report that is made available in public. So you just don't know what is the quality of that Aadhaar database. See, if you take 1.2 billion people, you know, who have Aadhaar, um, then if you claim that you have done 1.2 square biometric matches, 1.2 billion square, that is like 10 to the power 18 biometric matches. Right? Now, that's a combinatorial impossibility according to elementary computer science. I, mean, I don't know of any method by which in 10 years I could have done 10 to the power 18 biometric matches. So any computer scientist will question that. You know, that, that statement in, in mm -hmm. some way. Um, and there are no answers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me bring Prabir into our discussion. What uh, Subhashish has done in his article, he's given five reasons why the linking of electoral rolls with Aadhaar raises a huge number of concerns. First, he says Aadhaar is meant to be, is not meant to be a proof of citizenship, but only a digital identity. You know, if, if somebody who is even not a citizen can stay in this country for 182 days, she or he is eligible for an Aadhaar ID. Then he says that according to several statements that have been made, it's meant to be an identity proof, not a proof of your address. So effectively, it has happened. and uh, De facto. De facto, even both level officers are making judgments about the age and the proof of the residence of the particular person. Thirdly, as he had already pointed out, there's no publicly available audit reports of either the efficacy of the Aadhaar deduplication or authenticity of the database. And then he says the maintenance of the voter list is the primary responsibility of the Election Commission of India. And that we are seeing is that there's a potential conflict of interest because Aadhaar is ostensibly meant for distribution of welfare, benefits and so on and so forth. But if it becomes a method for the government to influence and manipulate voters, that is very, very dangerous. And finally, he says Aadhaar is a ubiquitous identity proof that is used for a variety of applications. And as he has mentioned, it will link it with profiling and targeting of voters. Yeah, your thoughts? You know, I think there are two sets of issues that Shubhashi has rightly focused that the purpose of these two databases, so to say, were different. Therefore, trying to match both of them, having now raising the question as he has, that who is the final arbiter of the two databases? In one case, it's the election commission, which is an independent authority. Other case, it's an instrument of the government. So the purpose of the, having an instrument of the government do government welfare measures is understandable. For that instrument of the government then to do what a constitutional authority was independently supposed to do is not the same. So I think that's a very, very fundamental contradiction that exists. Also, let's also look at it the other way, that the way it was passed. This is what we have been seeing right through, that what the Chief Justice in fact said, Ramana himself said, that when we had to look at the act, because it comes to us in, in case there is a conflict, it comes to us for resolution, then what do we do? We look at the parliamentary debates. We look at what is the report of the different committees on this so that we know the intent of the law. It's not the letter of the law that matters, it's the intent of the law. 
the legislative intent is conveyed. This time is not happening at all. The legislative intent is conveyed through parliamentary discussions, debates, and committee reports, none of which exist for this purpose. And this is your fundamental democratic instrument of change. You can change a government through this. If that itself is, shall we say, violated in this way, that we don't know what the purpose of this act, why has it been put over there, why have the two databases which are not compatible been mixed, one was for vote, the other is for receiving welfare, which even without being a citizen you can avail. Okay, let me ask you what has happened not very long ago in states in southern India, notably Telangana, Andhra Pradesh and also Puducherry. The election commission conducted various so-called pilot programs and they had uh, what they called a national electoral roll purification or authentication program and then it was supposed to, it was struck down by the Supreme Court. But the point is, what is clear today is that the state governments also conducted a state census and they included, as we were discussing earlier, details of caste, religion, bank accounts, various kinds of personal information. What are the implications of this kind of profiling of individuals and voters? So what happens is the UID number becomes the instrument of checking who are receiving what welfare measures, where do they stay if they receive the welfare, where is the bank account, all this information is available place of residence if you are buying property, say. And of course, you also have now the voter uh, ID. Now, if you map all of this, you are going to say, okay, this actually this person doesn't stay here, he is over here. Now, we can therefore say he should not be a voter here and strike him off. And this is what happened in Telegram. Essentially, the stock of the voters list, those who are not migrated, but who have a village residence, but stay in the city to work. So their votes were taken out. In fact, if I give you a number, in the 2018 assembly elections in Telangana, there was a deletion of an estimated 2 million, million voters. voters. 2 million voters. 2 million voters. So now this is only based on state databases, the government, state, the state government had databases, which it had access, and they used this collation. Now, of course, with Aadhaar, you have access to many more databases and therefore the ability to bring all of it together to say, well, you got gas from me. No, that will stop next month if you don't vote for me. Okay, so you have this very granular detail information when you combine different databases. Of course, you can always say the gov Indian government is uh, incompetent, but you know, these databases are available for sale. When you are talking mm -hmm. about electronic the image The integrity being, of that, no, we just, know. Just one minute, yes. just one minute. Electronic image being used, mm -hmm. actually that is not required. That mm -hmm. data leaks from within, within that's and it. that what you get is really the original mm -hmm. PDF from which the image has been made, mm -hmm. and therefore it's amenable to far more easy processing than even looking at that's billions of records. So uh, in like, image form. So all of this means that you have now the power to disenfranchise, the power to put spurious voters in, and also target what benefits you will give or not give before the election. Okay. Yeah. No, in, in fact, this is, this is really the point I want you to elaborate on. Uh, we already saw when Harish Khare was the editor of the Tribune, you had a situation where they published, they published all the data and then there was a lot of pressure on him, we learned. But the short point is this data is leaking. It's available for sale, illegally but available. I want you to elaborate a little more on how the linkage between Aadhaar and the electoral photo identity card could help political parties. I mean, by creating voter profiles, how how, how do you influence the voting process? This is really what I want you to talk about a little bit. You know, there are there are two ways. One is, um, so suppose suppose you have got, a, as I mentioned in the article as an example, suppose you have got a your kingly fought constituency, where you know the margin is sort of, sort of two percent. So now you know exactly where to put your resources, who to influence, if you can profile, if you can say that these set of voters are unlikely to vote for me, and I need to convince them one way or pressurize them. You profile them on the basis of religion, caste, 
their welfare usage pattern, their, their bank account, the kind of things they are doing, you have all that information. So, you know, if I was an election strategist, I would not look at the person who is surely not going to vote for me. I will definitely not waste my time on a person who will surely vote for me. But I will just target the Focus on the closely con contested borderline. And now I have identified them. And I will try my best to influence them either by you know, either way. keep them out of the elections or or, or bribe them, quote or unquote. Or cajole them or whatever. Some, right? I mean, some so. welfare measures I then target for only them or see they get it and others Yes, don't. so I think that having a profilable digital data is the first thing for an, for an election. Now, um, you could do it with voters list as well, just with the voters list, right? So, um, but doing it if the voters list is linked with Aadhaar, it becomes easier. In, in many ways. Because all the welfare measures, who is the recipient, then also that information. And is it available. is not also uh, equally available to all political parties. I think that the other being a government instrument, there is more information available to the So, So, the ruling party or the incumbent is likely to have a benefit, a, a benefit and advantage. You know, uh, this is where, I mean, my final point on which both of you can elaborate a little bit. Complete transparency the need for complete transparency or the risks associated and linking that with the issues of individual privacy. Prabir? Well, you know, the first important issue in this is ultimately our electoral process is the final instrument we have to change the rulers we don't like. Mm -hmm. Now, if that process is vitiated, all other processes will fail. And my problem here is the purpose of having an independent constitutional authority which conducts elections to keep it separate completely from other organs of the government. And this is the central issue, and Subhash has rightly pointed this out, this is the central issue that combining these completely disparate databases with an institution which is supposed to be free of government control, though technically it may be true, but physically, yes, of course, it has influence, but still, the process is being kept true, it was separate, not the individuals. You can influence individuals, but if the process is separate, then the chances of that happening are much less. At least there should be a Chinese wall separating all other databases from the electoral database, which is how we change the rulers. And unfortunately, this combining the two is to give rulers much more power that they don't change. That is, I think, the central problem that I have with what is what is okay. Uh, there is this article that recently appeared in the Hindu by Kiran Chandra, Yarlagada, and Srinivas Kodali, and they said you must stop. Uh, why the Aadhaar voter ID link must be stopped and uh, why it is that uh, the Aadhaar is being used to construct databases that have resulted in exclusion and profiling of voters. And they conclude that w if this goes on, the profile will introduce not just errors in electoral rules, and this will have a huge, a vast impact on India's electoral democracy. So what are your concluding remarks? What now needs to be done? and as concerned individuals, and you're not just a concerned individual, you are an expert, you're, you're, you're a computer scientist. What now, what's the way forward now? The government has pushed through this law. You know, I think that um, I agree with everything that um, Ravidya said, this is, this is dangerous. Um, and I would personally, I would like to see a rollback uh, of, of this. And I agree with Srinivas Kodali and, uh, and all of them. But that apart, you know, even without Aadhaar, this issue of making the voters list public. Now, this is a part of the Representation of People's Act uh, because that was one way to ensure the integrity of the electoral rule so that any addition or deletion can be publicly audited. Right? That's why you make it public. That's the transparency. But they didn't envisage the, the ease of copying and profiling of just the voters list data. So even without Aadhaar, that's a way of influencing voters or way of uh, targeting voters. It's not illegal, but whether it should be allowed or not is something that the electorate and the parliament should, should think of. And there may be technologies to prevent that, right? To have both, to have privacy and, and integrity. Uh, and, and public accountability. Pu public and accountability. Audits. Yeah. So I would suggest that the Election Commission of India should explore those technologies, right? Should have public debates on, on how to 
keep the electoral rules secure. You know, it is well understood in computer science that if I want to target or hijack an election, I will not target the voting process, the, the electronic voting process. I would target the electoral roll. And it is a setting duck, right? So I can do it uh, way before the election, five months before, so critically. So securing the electoral roll is a problem that has taken new dimensions in the digital age, now that it is digital. And I think that the Election Commission of India uh, should be more serious about it okay. and, and address it more directly. Just one last sentence to complete what he's saying. The answer doesn't really lie in computer science in this particular mm. case. They can only help, mm. but the answer is really political. political. Ultimately, it's the political parties and the people of this country who have to learn the hard way, as you did during emergency, that this is going to bring about a change in our democracy, and that needs to be fought because it's a loss of democracy. I think that's a crucial point. And the weakening of the entire democratic process, process. and all the systems associated with it. Thank you so much, Prabir. Thank you so much, Subhashish. You just heard and watched two experts talking about the dangers of linking the Aadhaar with the voter IDs or the electoral rolls, and what this would mean in terms of the future of democracy in the context of the recently enacted law by Parliament, a law that was pushed through without discussion and debate. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching News Click, sub subscribe to the channel, and, and share this program with as many people as you wish to.